Hi everyone, and welcome to part 3 of our Commodore 64C refurbishment and future proofing. In the last episode, we thought we had a bad SID chip, but it turned out to be a soldering mishap when recapping the machine, which was easily put right once discovered. We gave the machine a thorough scrub, getting into all the nooks and crannies that had accumulated dirt over nearly 40 years. Luckily we didn't need to retrobrite the machine, which is good news as there's no sun at all in the UK in winter, and we left the old girl looking almost as good as new. In this episode, we'll be looking at the Tape Cart SD storage solution, which was under £15 on eBay, plugs directly into the cassette port and allows the C64 to load tape and cartridge files from a micro SD card. Apart from the SD card slot, the only other interactive elements are two small LEDs. One to show write access, and the other for read access. We'll go through how to load games onto the SD card and how this actually works when using the C64 in a little while. But first, I'm not happy with bare electronics showing, so let's design ourselves a nice case to put it in. For this I'm using Autodesk Fusion 360, there's a link in the description, but of course there are many other 3D design tools we could use, this is just my preference. So we'll start with a basic box primitive, which I've dimensioned using measurements taken directly from the tape cart. I've added a couple of millimetres all round, as the measurements of the tape cart are the internal dimensions. We'll chamfer the outer edges for a cleaner look, and so there's no nasty sharp bits of plastic. Next we add in the slot for the edge connector and the SD card. We'll also create a slot so we can see the LEDs, although I'm sure they'll shine through the plastic in any case. We'll split the case in half so we have a way to get the tape card inside and also to allow us to print the case with the top and the bottom flat on the print bed. Supports are put in place to hold the bottom of the PCB away from the bottom of the case, so there's no stress placed on any of the lower solder joints. For the top of the case, we need to add in some pillars, which will act as a pressure fit for the two halves of the case, and also to stop the PCB from moving around inside. And lastly, a bit of honest to goodness branding. So let's get it printed. I won't chat over this bit as I know people love a bit of printing time lapse. Back in a tick. So with the printing finished, let's see if it fits together as planned. In the shack, whenever we need something, my first thought is always, can I print it? Not only is it cheaper, you get exactly what you want without compromise, and of course, it's an opportunity to learn new skills. I definitely recommend it, if you have the opportunity. Well, that looks pretty good. So with the tape cart in its lovely new protective case, it's time to put some software on the card and finally get the old girl up and running. First of all, we need the software that allows the tape cart to do its job. The link is in the description. This is a C64 program called browser.prg, and it does exactly that. It allows us to browse the contents of the SD card and choose which program to run, all from within the C64 itself. Simply format an SD card to FAT32. Here, I've also named my card C64, although this is optional. Then copy browser.prg to the root of the card, I've also copied over a diagnostics program and a couple of games for testing. With that done, we can pop the tape card into the back of the machine and power on. A green light, so let's switch to the C64 screen and see the tape card in action. When the C64 has booted up, we need to hit the shift and run stop keys as we would if loading from tape. The tape cart will kick in 
and will automatically feed the browser.prg program to the C64, which it auto loads and runs. The browser program shows us a list of files on the SD card and it's important to note that they're in the 8.3 file format, so you may want to rename your files accordingly. Let's load the 64 Doctor Diagnostics program and do some basic tests on our newly refurbished machine to make sure everything works as expected. Once loaded, the 64 Doctor allows us to cycle through a series of tests using the spacebar to select and the return key to run. We won't be running tests on the cassette, disk drive or printer as we don't have those attached. So let's do a test of the RAM first. I'm not expecting an issue here as the machine reports 38911 bytes free when booting into BASIC and that's the correct amount, but let's run the test anyway. Well that's good news and as expected. Now let's perform a test of the keyboard. This requires me to actually press each key on the keyboard and the software acknowledges that key press with an underscore. Let's go ahead and press all the keys. Again, good news as all the keys responded to my key press. Next up is a simple test of the graphics chips. In this test we see all of the C64's available colours and we can cycle the background colour too to ensure that nothing gets garbled or unreadable. Interestingly we've also tested the sprites as the little indicator that moves around on the main selection screen is a sprite. Everything looked good there, so let's do a quick test of one of the joystick ports. I'll test the other one later. This test requires me to move the joystick in all directions and also to press the fire button. There's an indicator on screen to show my actions. And that test has passed too. Only one test remaining, and that's the sound output. Hopefully my earlier soldering mishap, which shorted out the SID chip, didn't do any permanent damage. And although not exactly Chopin, that test does at least show that Sid is alive and well. So let's finally use our tape cart with our refurbished C64C and look at a couple of games. First up is Wizards of War. Let's follow that with one of my absolute favourites, International Karate Plus, which I apologise I'm not very good at. Never was and it would seem never will be. I'm the player in the red and it will become immediately apparent that I don't know what I'm doing. If you've noticed in the video, there are some vertical stripes across the screen. Uh, that's a common issue with the later VIC chips found in the shortboard C64Cs. We'll be addressing that in a quick snaps video soon, so look out for that. 
In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this series. If so, please let me know in the comments, and also let me know some of your favourite C64 games that I can try out. If you like the channel, please take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications of new uploads. We'll see you next time in the Retro Shack.